All right, so we just got off the pond. We have a cooler full of bass and brim, and I'm here to give you an example about how I personally fillet a bass and a bluegill. There's a lot of different ways to fillet fish out here, but here's how we're gonna go through things today. How we start off, of course, the cutting board's nice to have, keeps the tailgate clean or the kitchen counter or the outdoor patio porch. Um, also have a nice small fillet knife. This is a six inch blade. It does good for a lot of bass, less than two pounds, and, and for the most part, brim that are less than 10 inches. Um, it's always good to have a good sharp knife, so I've got a few examples of sharpening uh, uh, tools here. A nice uh, little handheld sharpener has two ceramic sticks, does a good job, and then also a diamond stone. A bowl to put my clean fillets into. A spoon, I'll show you all an example of how to quickly scale a brim with a spoon. And then also a waste bucket down below for the clean uh, carcasses. All right, so here I want to show you again, just like the bass, the anatomy of a bluegill. It's not much different, nor is the fillet process. Um, again, you have those all important intermuscular bones that you want to make sure you avoid, the rib cage, and really the rest of this fish is put together the same, uh, just a little bit broader than, 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 a, than a bass for its total length. Um, again, you don't want to cut through the, uh, the uh, body cavity and in, into the entrails or anything like that. Um, but just really not much different than a bass. All right, so now we'll move on to filleting a bluegill. Now with a bluegill, uh, folks tend to like the way the skin tastes, so they tend to scale bluegills. Um, you don't have to. You, you can, you can um, skin them just like the bass does, but we'll show you go, how to go ahead with a spoon and pretty quickly uh, f uh, scale a bluegill. Uh, you can just pinch the tail here or clamp it down if you like. If you're doing a lot of them, your fingers will get a little bit tired, but you just take the spoon and uh, just begin to kind of lift and go against the scales and, th and they'll start coming off in sheets as you can see. Um, not a real clean process. This is something you'll definitely want to do outside um, but just make sure you kind of move along uh, all over the side of the fish that you'll be uh, filleting. You don't want these blue these uh, bluegill scales to stay with you um, when you go to cook this fillet. Uh, they're, they're really crunchy. They're, they're really unpleasant to chomp on so you want to make sure you get all the all the scales knocked off here. Uh, you can make pretty quick work of it with the spoon. Uh, I always make sure I get the top of the tail and the bottom of the tail. Uh, those are some places they'll kind of hide on you. And you can flip it over and, and do, the, do the same to the other side. Um, but filleting a bluegill isn't a whole lot different than filleting a bass. Um, you'll see it's, it's very similar. Again, I'm going to start off right behind this peck fin, make a short little incision and come down uh, just behind the pelvic fins here uh, to the middle of the belly. And again, we're coming just just shallow. We don't want to be all the way inside this body cavity. We're making sh shallow little cuts, not cutting with much more than a half inch of the blade, if, if that. Uh, coming back to the vent again. And again, once I get to the vent, I'll stop, put my thumb in the, in the body cavity there to get myself a little bit of a, a, a better uh, view and a better, better cutting angle. And I'm coming just in front of this uh, anal fin again, just a little bit. And just like the bass, I'm going to just feel with the tip of my knife. Any pressure, I back out and I come back up a little bit and then keep moving through until this knife is back up at the top of this soft dorsal fin again. Uh, from here, we can again, with a little bit of downward pressure, just push along, coming over those vertebrae. And again, since we've scaled this bluegill, there's no reason to stop here. You just cut right through. Of course, if you want to skin it, you stop just as we did on the bass uh, to where it can be easily skinned later. But it's scaled, we'll cut right through. Just as before, we'll come back right in front of this pelvic fin where we started, and again make that make that um, uh, curved cut there to where we get as much meat as we can, especially on a bluegill. You know they're a small fish to begin with. You want to make make the most of your time and, and the most of that fish. So again, we're just shallowly cutting right along, kind of just right there in front of the head. There, there's a lot of meat just above that eyeball. From there, and again, we're not pushing all the way through, cutting through bones. If, if you ever feel resistance, you slow down, you stop, and then you, you, you move over whatever that bone structure is you're feeling. From here again, I'm gonna turn my knife and just follow that spinal column and those vertebrae all the way back down the spine and up on the side of this fish. And again, I'm not cutting very far. You can't see the, the lateral line as well because we scaled it, but again, the lateral line runs right here and my knife is stopping right here. I'm only in the fish about an inch moving along. Any farther than that you end up starting to cut those intermuscular bones in the rib cage. So again I'm all the way through the tail where I left off and I'm just going to peel this fillet up to where I can begin to see the ribs. I'm going to cut down to the ribs which I'm right there already. I can feel that resistance. I'm not going to keep cutting. From here I'm going to again cut around those intermuscular bones cutting back towards the skin 
until I come out and I can see them all right there. They're all lined up from there. When I get to the edge of the skin, I curve my knife back down and in and come right back through to where I'm leaving that vein of, of intermuscular bones right there. And you can see because I've scaled this fish, it's very close to the skin. There's just a few filaments there. It's okay that you not cut a hole in the fillet or anything like that. You've just missed all those bones that you'd otherwise be chomping on. So don't be worried about that. Again, I'm going to feel the ribs here. And just come through and cut down just over the ribs. And there's our nice, nice bluegill fillet. And you're going to have little spots like that. I don't feel bad about that. Um, a, a skin fish is very soft right here. You can easily... Um, easily come right through the skin and have little areas like that. But other than that, that's a nice clean, it's a nice clean fillet. Oh, there's one little one I missed. Like I say, you can feel there's a little rib. But right here at the tail end, this rib's really small and kind of sticks out a little bit. It's right there. I can feel it. Rather than eat it later, I'll pull it out and throw it away. But other than that, that's exactly how you want to fillet a bluegill. Nice clean fillet, ready to be cleaned and either frozen or put into the pan.